So you want to know how you can bring AI into your business. So uh, this is the million dollar question. You ask five different people, they'll tell you five different things. Um, if you are considering um, and if you want to bring AI into your business to obviously uh, to improve productivity, cut costs and so on, there's, there's only two ways that's possible. Uh, one is uh, you look at a process and look at automate that process and see um, at what point you can bring uh, generative AI to do certain tasks that previously you had to put a human being to do it. That That's one way of doing it. The other one is uh, called the AI autonomous AI agent or, or very similar to the co-pilot approach. So those are the two ways you can actually bring AI um, into a, introduce AI into a business. Um, using chat GPT and giving your team chat GPT is not AI automation. It's just, um, yeah, it's not AI automation. Um, recently somebody said, I saw an article, they're saying, oh, look, you should um, uh, copy paste your emails into chat GPT and write it. Don't do that uh, unless you have a proper team's paid account uh, which is like 30 bucks per user don't do that because you don't know how these guys gonna use the data so it's vague um, about the the privacy of the data so don't upload your emails but um, that's the way so process automation how we how um, you should look at it is let's say your business have um, you have to do five different processes like uh, uh, we do a lot of work in the strata industry here in Australia. So let's look at the insurance renewal process. So you look at the insurance renewal process, you get an email with uh, saying that your insurance is up for renewal. Then you obviously look at it and go, ah, oh, look, um, I need to uh, do this. So is there a do is there a standing order to say, look, for me to go ahead and do it? Or what's the process? Do I have to get quotes or am I just going to renew the existing insurer? Things like that. So there's a lot of human touch points, a lot of human involvement. So when you put AI, how would you do it? Did you actually have an AI agent reading the email coming in? It can understand what's what's in there. And then obviously it can um, look, go into your system and look at if there are any um, standing orders whether I'm re re um, renewing the existing one or whether I'm, I have to go and find something new. So based on that, the AI generative AI can actually make a decision based on the information you provide. That's the beauty of it. That's where we can push the automation boundary a little bit further. So when we are doing stuff, we have Merlot, we, we plug that into Merlot. Merlot has maybe is capable of responding to those emails and things like that um, and get the process running. So, um, and also um, you can have those certain checkpoints where uh, the AI can come to the human, in this instance, the strata manager, the property manager, OC manager, and ask, hey, look, this is what I have. This is what I've found. Do you want me to go ahead and do this? So OC manager can still continue to keep staying in control and get these things done. So that process that previously used to take about a few hours can be very instant. So that's how, that's just an example, but then you have your work order management, you have your AGM processes, you have your debt collections and things like that. You can actually automate those things. So that's how you should approach. That's one way to look at the AI. So you just look at the processes and go, you know, this is what you, the other, you can also like when they send the quotations, you can actually get the AI to go and review it and make recommendations based on its knowledge base. It's available and its ability to do it. The benefit there is, let's say a lot of these big companies, like like uh, the, the problem with in the strata industry or, or any professional services industry is the capacity of the uh, of the key employee, the, 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 the star of the show. So in this instance, that's OC manager, the available limited time. So how they're gonna do the scaling is using admin assistants. So admin assistants are not, so not um, it's it's all right it's, it's great they work perfectly but sometimes you have errors and things like that and AI will work 24 7 high very high level of accuracy you never say I forgot to do this step things like that so that's where the benefit part we will talk about the benefits later today I just want to highlight 
how uh, one way of bringing AI into your business, that's one. The other way is called co-pilot approach, which is um, autonomous AI agents and things like that you can bring in there. So this is not chatbots. This is this is this may look like a chatbot, but it's not a chatbot. You going to you can have. I'll take the same example. Let's say uh, in a, in a startup business, you can still have um, a AI agent, autonomous AI agent, going and doing stuff. Read your email. Find out. Okay, this person wants to. They have a burst pipe. I should do these things. He's asking. Is this whatever they are doing is um, covered by insurance. So I need to go and check their policy, get the policy information, go do that. The same thing your admin assistant or, or Strata assistant would do, you can have the AI assistant doing it in 24 seven. So that's our product just to throw in there. Uh, that, that's Merlot. Merlot is um, an autonomous agent to pretty much have, have uh, configured Merlot to do similar things for similar businesses. So um, there you go. So that that's how it is. So it's co-pilot. It's more like having your AI assistant uh, working and getting those things done to support um, the actor, the, the key role within the business. So we, you, it's not just in Strata. Like in in this instance, we have internally for me, my business. I have an HR AI agent who um, manages the leave, who manages onboarding, offboarding, help my team to find forms and things like that in the business, help them with their training. Obviously, we deal with some um, um, uh, clients who have a uh, very high level of security. So we have to make sure my team is uh, well trained and do those audits and things like that. So. Um, so yeah, guys, look, that's how, that's the two ways you can actually bring AI into your business and um, bringing ChatGPT, be very aware of all these bringing small um, uh, systems that you have SaaS systems out there. Be very cautious when you have to share your data and things like that. So um, I hope you found this uh, helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach um, leave a message and also what my what we do is we help companies to bring ai into the business so um and we come and do a current we, we look at your business and we tell you look this is the best way for you to do it this is uh, whether you need uh, an ai agents whether you need to automate the business processes or whether you have both to get that like the productivity improvements we've seen are enormous and also um if you are a business who looking struggling to manage the workload you, it's a great time for you to consider this so um again thank you for um staying this long and listening i hope i add value if you have any questions reach out to me have a good one Bye bye